My name is Allison Chevalier and I am the Executive Director of the Detroit Gatsby Party. What's the Gatsby Party? Well, I just moved from New York in April of 2015, and in New York every year they have the Jazz Age Lawn Party on Governor's Island, and I wanted to bring something like that with me to Detroit. So I began the Detroit uh, Gatsby Lawn Party in Palmer Park. We had that in September, and this is our first Detroit Gatsby Winter Gala here at the Charles T. Fisher Mansion. Okay, and what would people experience by coming to an event like this? Well, in this particular venue, they're going to experience really what it was like to live like Jay Gatsby. I mean, this mansion was built by Charles T. Fisher in 1922, and it's loaded with the most luxurious details and beautiful furniture, roaring fireplaces, um, and there's a ballroom downstairs, there's a pipe organ in the entryway. I mean, this, this place is the perfect venue. It's very, very Gatsby. Okay, now, in Detroit, in just its feel, what reminds you of the times of the 20s, just in the city itself. Right, well, the 1920s was an incredible time of change. So all sorts of new things were being introduced, new fashions, new music, the motor car. Um, and then Detroit has a special place in history because it really was the gateway during Prohibition for liquor to enter the country. So a lot of people who live here in Detroit are really interested in that aspect of Prohibition and the part that Detroit played and the rum runners and the bootleggers. And it's kind of fun, in fact, this venue has a secret speakeasy. It was built during the Depression. Uh, the owners built this hidden speakeasy, and right next to it, there's a huge safe where they would lock away all of their booze in case there was a raid. Okay, now, I don't think that that will be happening tonight, <laughs> but what type of food, what type oh, of gosh. tricks, what type of partying right. is gonna take place at this party? Right, well, everything is free-flowing. We have an amazing, uh, amazing uh, strolling supper. Our chef, Brian Pazinski, has put that together for us. There's everything. There's oysters, there's shrimp, there's beef, there's steak, there's, I'm forgetting what else, scallops. It's amazing. We have a bar full of champagne that's flowing and wine. Um, we have beer from the uh, Black Bottom Brew, Brew Club. Um, mixed drinks down in the speakeasy, and we have Phil Ogilvie's Rhythm Kings playing uh, jazz, hot jazz from the 1920s. All right, now, with that, that's this event. What's going to happen next? What are you going to do to keep oh adding to the events and the culture right, right. of Detroit? Well, one of my, my goal, my intention coming here was that I wanted to create an event that brought people into the city into places they would not normally go. And I wanted to be something for the people living in the city, not just downtown, you know, and not just for the people in the suburbs, but for the people in the outlying neighborhoods as well. So I chose Palmer Park for my venue for the lawn party, and that's scheduled for September 11th, 2016, so that's coming up. And who knows, there might be a couple of, or at least one more event between now and then. Okay, now, till then, if somebody wants to find out information, get in contact with you, if they want to uh, give you some bootleg liquor that they have in their cabinet. <laughs> I'll take it. How do, uh, how do they get in contact with you? Well, they can either uh, email me at info at DetroitGatsbyLawnParty.com. They can check out our website, DetroitGatsbyLawnParty.com. They can find us on Facebook. They can find me, Allison Chevalier, on Facebook. And there's a ton of ways to get a hold of me. All right, and I always ask people this question. It's the Detroit is a different question. If you could rename Woodward after one Detroiter, who would it be? Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. I. I you can't ask me that question. I haven't been here long enough to know the Detroiters. But I would say, you know what, I would choose a mom. I'd choose a single mom who's struggling to get her kids to school every day, get herself to work every day, and come back and be a loving mother with energy enough to deal with everything she has to deal, to deal with. A lot of the women that I've met here, I mean, they're heroes. What they're doing in spite of the conditions around them is really, really astounding. Also, <laughs> One of, the, one of the people who I love, uh, this, this is benefiting the Imers Foundation. And the Imers Foundation was found, so maybe two streets. The Imers Foundation was founded by Robbie Imers, who's a 13-year-old boy, who when he was nine years old, his mother took him to a homeless shelter to, to distribute blankets. And he was so touched by what he saw and so moved by these people suffering and their unhappiness. So he started bring, collecting his lunch money and his allowance. He started bringing things into the city every Saturday. He founded the foundation when he was 11 years old, two years ago, and he has since, in this, all of this time, these few years, he has raised more than $200,000 for things like warm clothes, blankets, nourishing hot food, toiletries for the city's homeless. 
So like, Robbie's a hero too, you know, and you've got people working from two different directions, people raising their kids in the best way they can, and then people like Robbie, who I, I'm very excited to, um, to learn what Robbie will do when he's 20 years old, because what he's doing as a 13 year old is just astounding, and it's a huge inspiration to all of us. Definitely more than I did at 13. <laughs> I know too. All right, thank you so much. Thank you.